Hey, how's it going everybody? In this short video, I'm going to be going over how we can create the stock watch list that you can see in my background right now. It's very convenient because to add new stocks, all you need to do is add a new ticker symbol and the entire sheet is being automatically updated with live data. We're going to be building all of this in Google Sheets. And before we jump in, I just want to mention that if you want to download this, you can find the link to it in the description down below. So let's get right in. So let me go ahead and write in the very first ticker symbol into cell A2. We're simply going to take the ticker symbol for Apple, which is AAPL. And then after that, in the name uh, column, we're going to add a formula which automatically gets the name of the company based on the ticker symbol. And the way we can do that is we can use Google Finance. So we're going to set this equal to Google Finance. And then the first thing that you want to add within these brackets is the ticker symbol. And that's the one that we simply wrote in a moment ago. So we're going to um, click on that cell. And after that, we have to choose the attribute which we want to insert. And in this case, it's going to be the name of the company. So we can simply write name and close the brackets. And you'll see that after loading, it already tells us that the company name with the ticker symbol AAPL is Apple. Now let's move on to the market capitalization. So in order to get the market capitalization, we can go ahead and write equals, and then we're going to use Google Finance again. And within the brackets, we first need to specify the ticker symbol, but now instead of the name, we're going to write market cap and make sure to write it in all lowercase letters like I did over here. Then close off the brackets and we get the market capitalization. Now we don't want to leave it like this because it's not really legible. We want to shorten it down in some elegant way. And the way we can do that is we can go to format, number, and then we can pick a custom number format. And I'm going to use this custom number format, which you can see over here. So let me go ahead and write hashtag, comma, hashtag, hashtag, zero, comma, 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 and then in quotation marks, a space and a B. So the space and the B at the end is going to be um, the sign for billions. So if I go ahead and press enter, you can see that it shortened down the market cap and now it looks a little bit more elegant. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to insert a chart of the stock price over the past 10 years into this single cell over here, into D2. And I'm going to be building a bit of a more complex formula now, but I wanna break it down for you so that you understand what you're building. So we're going to go ahead and start off by getting the prices over the past 10 years. The way we do that is by writing equals, Google Finance, and then we can click on the ticker symbol first, the attribute which we're getting, which is the um, price. And after that, we wanna specify the start date and the end date. So from which date we're getting the prices until which date. And if we want the prices uh, going back 10 years, we can write E date. And within the E date formula, we're gonna to write today, today's date, but we're going to subtract from that 120 months. So we're going to go back from today's date by 120 months. And then you can see the next thing that I have to insert is the end date, and that is going to be today. And the final thing that I need to do is I need to close off the brackets. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this formula real quick because I just want to demonstrate what this formula does that we have at the moment. So if I press enter, you can see that I get a long list of all the stock prices over the past 10 years of the Apple stock. But of course, that's not a chart yet. So let's go back and reinsert what we wrote a moment ago. And I'm going to add to this because I'm going to add uh, the index, index, and what this does is it allows us to only choose one specific um, column. So a moment ago, you saw that we didn't only have the prices, we also had the dates 
but we don't need the dates. We only need the prices. So we're going to reduce that to only the prices by writing two over here. So by, by inserting these two commas and the two, we're just saying, OK, we only want the second column and give us all the individual rows because we're leaving the row entry over here blank. So let me go ahead and copy this. And if I execute this, you can see that you have all the individual closing prices now. So the dates are now gone, which is nice. The next thing that we're going to do to our formula, which I'm pasting in right here, is that we're going to add the sparkline, which allows us to make these nice graphs. So I'm going to write sparkline. And then in brackets, I'm going to add one more thing, which is the way we want the chart to look. So we are going to add a couple of attributes in the curly brackets. The first one is the chart type. Type. And we want the chart type to be a column chart. So we're going to write column next. Then we're going to add a semicolon because we're going to separ separate the individual attributes. And the second attribute is going to be the color. And we want it to be nice and green. All right, so now if I go ahead and add this within the appropriate cell, which is D2, you can see that we have this very nice small chart inserted into our cell D2. Now, I find it quite helpful if my watch list doesn't only have a chart over the past 10 years, but also a small chart that zooms into the past year. And the way we can accomplish this is by simply copying the formula that we created for the chart that shows us the 10 years. And we're going to simply paste it into the chart uh, one year column. Now, we're going to make one small change to this uh, formula, which is we're going to change the number of months that we're going back over here. So you can see that this e-date formula over here is getting us a date which is 120 months in the past. Um, but now we only want 12 months in the past because we're only looking back one year. And if I press enter, you can see that we now have a stock chart that zooms in to the prices of the past year. Now let's move on and get the price of the Apple stock. So we can do that by writing equals Google Finance, then selecting the ticker symbol again, which is in the cell A2. And after that, we're going to get the price attribute. So we're going to write price in here and close the brackets. Now you can see that we have the price display. And just make sure that you have the price in the right format. So for me, this has automatically jumped into the right format because under number, I have selected the automatic format. Getting the currency is also pretty easy. All we need to write down is Google Finance, then select the ticker symbol again. And after that, we're getting the currency attribute, closing the brackets, and you can see it's US dollars. For the P-E ratio, we're going to go to Google Finance again, select the ticker symbol as usual, and get the P-E ratio by writing P-E in quotation marks. And then we have the P-E ratio. And the final easy one we have over here is the earnings per share. So Google Finance once again, select the ticker, and then you know how it goes. We write EPS in here close the brackets, and we have the earnings per share. So that's how you get the price currency PE ratio and EPS. The next thing that I'm going to include into my watch list is the percentage change of the stock price over the past month, six months, and 12 months. In order to calculate the percentage change of the price over the past month, all we need to do is we need to subtract the price from one month ago from the current price and then divide all that by the current price. Since we already have the current price over here in uh, cell F2, the only challenge that we face right now is that we need to get the price from one month ago. So in order to get the price from one month ago, we're going to write equals Google Finance 
And first off, we're always specifying the ticker, which is always our Apple uh, stock for this very first row. Afterwards, we need to choose the attribute we're getting, which is the price. Next up, we want to choose the um, date from which we want the price. So we are going to use eDate. And we're going to look at the price of today, but then we want to subtract one month from that. And if I go ahead and close these brackets over here, you will see that I get a total of four cells. So I get the date, the close, uh, the actual date, and the closing price. But the closing price is all we need. So in order to only retrieve the closing price and not all four of these cells, we need to change our formula a little bit by using the index again. So we're gonna write index, and we want to get the index of the cell 2, 2, right? Because the price is in the bottom right-hand corner of our 2 by 2 um, cells. So this is going to give us the price. Great. So now we have the price of the stock from one month ago. All we need to do now to calculate the percentage change of the price over one month is to subtract the price from one month ago from the current price. So we're going to write, um, we're going to click on F2, which is the current price, and we're going to subtract the price from the past, and then we're going to put all of that in brackets and divide that by F2 again. And once we do that, we have the percentage change of the price over the past month. Now to calculate the percentage change of the price over the past six months and 12 months, we can copy the formula and paste it into both the columns over here. But now we need to make sure that we're subtracting the right number of months. So we need to change this one to a six and we need to change this minus one to a minus 12. And that gives us the percentage changes over the past month, six months, and 12 months. But since I'm not quite happy with the way this is displayed, I'm going to make it a little bit nicer by applying the format, number, and then the percentage. So that makes it look a little bit more elegant. Besides that, I'm also going to add a little bit of color formatting to this. Um, so positive percentages are going to be displayed in green and negative ones are going to be displayed in red. The way to do that is to right click on all these selected three cells and I'm going to click on conditional formatting down here under view more cell actions. And once that opens up, I'm going to make sure that the fill color is none and I want to make sure that um, under the rule, if the cell is greater than um, the value zero, I want to make sure that it is displayed in a nice sort of green color. And I'm going to click on done and add another rule because the uh, numbers can of course also be negative. So then if it's less than zero, we want to make sure that the color is red. Now let's close down the conditional format rules and add the two final columns that I have open, which is the 52 week high price and the 52 week lowest price. To do that, we're simply going to write equals Google Finance, choose the ticker symbol, which is in our cell A2. And after that, I need to choose the attribute which I'm getting, which is high 52. And that is going to give me the highest price over the past 52 weeks. To get the lowest price, we can proceed in a similar way, which is write equals Google Finance, choose the ticker symbol, which is A2 again. And the attribute is now going to be low 52. Um, low 52, there we go. So now that we're done adding all the values, we can go ahead and add any number of stocks to our watch list that we want to. And all we have to do is simply write in the ticker symbol. So let's, for example, go ahead and add Microsoft 
which has the ticker symbol MSFT. And all we need to do now is highlight the cells um, to the right of the ticker symbol and drag them down by one. And you'll see now all the Microsoft specific information is being displayed in our watch list. Now let me perhaps add a couple more stocks such as Visa, which has the ticker symbol V, and another stock could be something like Waste Management, which is WM. And we can go ahead and simply drag the cells down again and we get all the information that we want. To round things off, we can apply some simple formatting to this. So let's go ahead and highlight everything and align it to the uh, left-hand side and we can make it nice and bold. And then we can also perhaps um, space out the individual uh, rows in the same way. So we highlight the rows and then drag a little bit to make them be dragged in the same way. And to format the color of the individual rows, I can select, for example, row number two and row number four separately by holding the um, control button and clicking on the rows. And I can add some shading to this. Um, let me go ahead and add a light gray color to this. And we can also make the header uh, with the individual column names a little bit more prominent by, for example, making it gray and making the writing inside uh, white. All right, so that sums up this stock watch list video. If it helped you out, then make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel um, and leave a comment with what I should do next on this channel. All right, so hope this helped and see you in the next video.